Welcome to Focused on Forward. The purpose of this podcast is to focus on recovery from life situations, be it a disease, chronic or acute, perhaps the loss of someone so dear to you in death, or a change of life patterns that has affected you so profoundly that you have no choice but to find your new normal and become focused on moving forward. Each episode is designed to show the positivity that people bring to each and every one of their stories, the successes they've had, ways that they have become so definitively focused on moving forward. We look forward to sharing their stories, and we hope that they inspire you just as much as they have inspired us. Thanks for listening, and enjoy the show. Hello, and welcome to Focused on Forward. Today, we have the privilege of talking with Dr. Debbie Silver. Debbie's going to talk with us today about her journey through life and and what led her to discover an emotion I think that most of us have gone through, most of us have had, but we didn't have an idea of what to call it. At least I know that I didn't have an idea of what to call it. But I do now, uh, after having had a chat with Debbie uh, previously to today and uh, having an opportunity to look over some of the, her work in the past. And so we're going to talk about uh, post-betrayal syndrome and how that affected her life and ultimately how she was able to move forward with that and how she became focused on forward in her life. So Debbie, thank you for joining us today. Oh, thank you so much. We're looking forward to our conversation. Yeah, likewise. So what I'd like to do, Debbie, is just kind of turn the microphone over to you. If you would, please give some, the people some backstory about mm-hmm. about how you came up with uh, this term, mm-hmm. what it is, and and really how it affected your life and getting you to the point of discovering that this is what you were going through. Yeah, well, it's my 30th year in business. And as my life would grow and change, so would business. And it was health and then mindset and personal development and stress and then trauma. And I had a horrible betrayal from my family. A few years later, it was my husband. And like anybody who's been through it, I was blindsided, devastated, shocked, overwhelmed. And I, I looked at the two experiences and I said, well, what's what's common to these two? And I realized I, re- I never really took my own needs seriously. I was always sort of last on the to-do list. So I said, something has to change. And that's me. It's certainly not that I, I it's not that I caused it, but I, I was ready to make the change. And so here I was, I had uh, four kids and six dogs and I was 50 and I was like, we're going back for a PhD. I didn't know how I was going to pay for it, how I was going to do it, <laughs> um, but I was so determined and it was in transpersonal psychology. That's the psychology of transformation and human potential. And while I was there, I did a study and I studied betrayal. What holds us back? What helps us heal? And what happens to us physically, mentally, and emotionally when the people closest to us lie, cheat, and deceive? That study led to three groundbreaking discoveries, which changed my my health, my family, my business, my life. Uh, to answer your question, though, that's the, a little bit of the backstory there. Post-betrayal syndrome was one of those three discoveries. Okay. And And what that was, was we found there's actually this collection of symptoms, physical, mental, and emotional, so common to betrayal, it's known as post-betrayal syndrome. So... Since that discovery, we we have uh, one of the one of the things we did was we we have a quiz on the site to see to what extent people are struggling. The post betrayal syndrome quiz. Twenty five thousand people have easily have taken it. Every age, almost every country is represented. And what's so interesting is, you know, we've all heard time heals all wounds. I have the proof when it comes to betrayal that's not true, because there's a, a there's a question that says, is there anything else you'd like to share? And people write things like, my betrayal happened 35 years ago and I'm unwilling to trust again. My betrayal happened 15 years ago, feels like it happened yesterday. So we know uh, when it comes to betrayal, it needs a very specific protocol. And and totally up to you, every few months I pull the stats from the quiz just Mm -hmm. to see physically, mentally, and emotionally how people are doing. Would you, I mean, I'm happy to share Please, feel free. Sure. Okay. So this is out of figure 25,000 people around 25,000 people, 78% constantly revisit their experience. 81% feel a loss of personal power. 80% are hypervigilant. That's just exhausting. 94% deal with painful triggers. Here are the most common physical symptoms. 71% have low energy. 68% have sleep issues. 63% extreme fatigue. So you can wake up and you're just as exhausted. Uh, 47% have weight changes. So in the beginning, maybe you can't hold food down later on. You're using food for comfort. Sure. And 45% have digestive issues. 
ranging. I mean, IBS, Crohn's, colitis, you mm-hmm. name it, it's there. Mental, 78% are overwhelmed. 70% walking around in a state of disbelief. 68% are unable to focus. 64% are in shock. And 62% are unable to concentrate. So imagine you, you, you're you unable to concentrate. You have a gut issue. You know, you're exhausted. Mm-hmm. And here you are trying to work, raise your kids, all of these things. That's not even the emotional ones. 88% extreme sadness, 83% anger. You just mix anger and sadness, and that's a lethal conversation. Yeah, it's, absolutely. It's, and exhausting. 82% feel hurt, 80% are anxious, 79% are stressed. Here's why I wrote the book Trust Again, ready? 84% have an inability to trust. 67% are preventing themselves from forming deep relationships because they're afraid of being hurt again. 82% find it hard to move forward. 90% want to move forward, but they don't know how. So that was just out of that one discovery. Wow. Some of those statistics are, are kind of staggering when you they're think really about bad. it, uh, especially right. when you get into the emotional side of things and how people are are, are truly holding themselves back because of this this betrayal and, and how it's affected them That's and that go that will go on and affect the other things too clearly well you you know and and what it also does is i mean i can spot an unhill betrayal a mile away and we see it in health in work in relationships and that's the thing because it just doesn't heal on its own we wonder why we're struggling so much or you know why we're we're, our health is affected why it's affecting work why it's it's affecting relationships it's because it's unhealed like for example i'll see it in relationships in one of two ways a repeat betrayal is an unhealed betrayal. So the faces change, but you say, you know, why is it that I keep going from partner to partner, partner, friend to friend to friend, boss to boss to boss, different faces, same thing. And Mm -hmm. that's because here's a golden opportunity for you to learn something profound. And until and unless you do, you keep getting opportunities in the form of people to show you. And maybe the lesson is you need better boundaries in place. Maybe you need to realize you're lovable, worthy, deserving already, whatever it is. And you keep getting these opportunities to learn that. Or we also see it in relationships where people put that big wall up. They're like, nope, been there, done that. No one's getting near me or my heart. Right. And they think it's coming from a place of strength. It's not. It's coming from fear. So, you know, those are two just classic ways we see it with uh, with just relationships, you know, in I'll see it in health. People go to the most well-meaning doctors, coaches, healers, therapists to manage a stress-related symptom, illness, condition, disease. At the root of it is an unhealed betrayal. We see it at work all the time, too. You know, people want that raise or promotion. They deserve it. But their confidence was shattered. Sure. So they don't have the confidence to ask and they're bitter and resentful. Or they want to be a team player. But the person they trusted the most proved untrustworthy. So how do they trust that boss, that coworker, that collaborative partner? Shows up everywhere. Okay. So for for a little bit more background and so for people can understand and appreciate the advice that you're giving and, and I, I it's you're you're giving some really good information here. Um, but how did you become to recognize and, and the these symptoms in you? How did you see the need for you to move forward? Because you said you you woke up one day and said it's something about me and I I need to make a change. So what was it that you recognized in you? Yeah, you know what it is, but betrayal lends itself. It it is such an utter crash and burn of life as you've known it, of a relationship as you've known it, of you as you've known it, if you allow for that. And the the beauty then is you look and you say, you know what, Um, I can either stay stuck, which so many people do, or I can use this opportunity. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I don't know what it's going to look like, but it's got to be better than this. And I'm going to heal. And, and, it's it's almost you just sort of put your head down and say, I'm not picking it up until I'm out the other side. And for me, uh, integrity is my highest value. So right. imagine something like betrayal here. There wasn't a cell of me that was OK with it. So I remember moving through the healing. It wasn't even enough for me to heal. I said, you know what? I remember saying it. If I heal from this, I'm taking everybody with me. That's <laughs> just the way it's going to be. <laughs> you know? um, and that was the that was the the intention. And it it just um, it was this relentless determination just to not stay in this toxic, horrific, heartbreaking, soul crushing pain because mm-hmm. it's 
it's it's devastating. This was the person. These were the people that gave you a sense of safety and security. So when this is the person, these are the, the people to shatter that very sense of safety and security. It's traumatizing. And, um, you know, one of the other things we learned was rebuilding is always a choice, whether you rebuild yourself and move on. And that's what I did with my family. It wasn't an option to rebuild with them. Or if the situation lends itself, if you're willing, if you want to, you rebuild something entirely new with the person who hurt you. And that's what I did with my husband. So um, not long ago, we married each other again. New rings, new vows, new dress. Oh, wow. Okay. Our, our four kids is our bridal party. Now, certainly, I never in a bazillion years would have done anything remotely like that if I wasn't completely different and certainly if he wasn't completely different. Right. No, that's that's impressive that you guys are able to heal the relationship. Well, you know, that what I see also is so many people are so afraid of that death and destruction of the old. Mm -hmm. But it's only when it's dead and gone can you rebirth you, know, you, can, you can birth something new. And I see so often people just try to patch it up. It just doesn't work. It's got to just completely crash. You know, for the, you know, what, what I've seen work the best within the PBT Institute, where it completely crashes. And then from there, you just do your healing. And that person, if, you know, if they're up for it, they do their healing. And then if mm -hmm. you meet up later on, it's meant. You know, it's meant to be. If not, then at least you, at least that trauma served a purpose in bringing you to a level of you you never would have had access to had that not happened. No, I think I think that's very wise advice. I think if you're going to move forward, I think that's one of the things you're going to have to do because I think you have to get to a place inside of yourself that you have to be comfortable with you, okay. and you have to be uncomfortable with your own. You know, the, the saying "comfortable in your own skin," and if you're not there, you're going to just circle back to the same issues that you were having before. That's it. And, so. and that's, that's actually, you know, one of the other um, discoveries that was that while we can stay stuck for years, decades, a lifetime, and so many of us do, if we're going to fully heal, we're going to move through five now proven predictable stages. And what's even more exciting about that is we now know what happens physically, mentally, and emotionally at every one of those stages. And we know what it takes to move from one of those stages to the next. So now there's a, there's a roadmap. But to what you just said, that's so common in the most common stage people get stuck in, which is stage three. Transformation doesn't even happen until stages four and five. And most people get stuck right there in that stage three. I mean, I'm happy to go through the stages if that would serve. Yeah, I was, I was actually just getting ready to ask you about those. If you would, please share uh, with us those what those stages are and, and what kind of uh, basically goes on inside of them, what the person's experiencing, what they're feeling potentially. Yeah, sure. So, and of course, I'm giving you a brief summary here. This is what we teach within the Institute. It's mapped Understood. out. Understood. But yeah, so the stage one was like a set, like a setup stage. And I saw this with every study participant, me included. If you imagine, if you can imagine four legs of a table, the four legs being physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual. What I saw with everybody was this real heavy lean on the physical and the mental and kind of ignoring the emotional and the spiritual. So what does that look like? Looks like we're really good at thinking and doing and not really paying much attention to the feeling and being. That's where our intuition lies. And we turn okay. that down. That's not to say if you're busy thinking and doing, it's a recipe for betrayal. It's just what I consistently saw. Stage two, by far the scariest stage. And this is the shock. This is D-Day Discovery Day. This is where that person takes the mask off and says, this is who I've been this whole time. And the, it's the shock. It is tattooed on your mind and on your heart. And this is the breakdown of the body, the mind, and the worldview. Right here, you've ignited the stress response. So you're headed for every single stress-related symptom, illness, condition, disease. Your mind is in a complete and total state of chaos and overwhelm. You cannot wrap your mind around the information you just learned. This makes no sense. It's like that weird time warp thing is happening. Okay. And your worldview is shattered. Your worldview is your mental model. These are the rules. This is how life works. Trust this person. Don't go there, right? And in a moment... Everything you've known to be real and true is no longer. And in, so the bottom is bottomed down on you and a new bottom hasn't been formed yet. So it's terrifying. But think about it. If the bottom were to bottom out on you, what would you do? You grab hold of anything and everything you could to stay safe and stay alive. That's stage three. Survival instincts emerge. It's the most practical of all of the stages. 
where do I go? How do I survive this experience? Who can I trust? Where do I live? How do I feed my kids? Like, it's just practical. Mm -hmm. I mean, here's the trap. And this is why people get stuck here. Once you've figured out how to survive, because it feels so much better than the shock and trauma of where you just came from, you're like, whew, okay, we got this. We're, We're good. And you start planting roots here. You have no idea there's a stage four and stage five. So because you think this is it, you're trying to find a way to make this okay. And a few things start happening. The first thing is you get these small self benefits. You get to be right. You get someone to blame. You get your story. You get a target for your anger. You get sympathy from everybody you tell your story to. You don't have to do the hard work of learning to trust again. Should I trust you? Should I trust you? I forget it. I'm not trusting anybody. Right? So you So you stay there and you plant deeper roots because you're here longer than you need to be. Now your mind starts doing things like, well, maybe you're not all that. Maybe you deserved it. Maybe this, maybe that. And you start planting deeper roots because you're here, right? And then now like energy attracts like energy. So now you're calling situations and circumstances and relationships towards you to confirm this is where you belong. It gets worse. I'll get you out of here though. Because this feels so bad, but you have no idea there's anything better right here is where you resign yourself. And you're like, I better find a way to just get through the day. So right here is where you start using food, drugs, alcohol, work, TV, keeping busy, reckless behavior Mm -hmm. to numb and avoid distract yourself from what's painful to feel or face. So think about it. You do this for a day, a week, a month. Now it's a habit, a year, five, 10, 20 years. And I can see someone 20 years out and say, you know what, that drinking you're doing, or, you know, that emotional eating you're doing, or that numbing in front of the TV you're doing. Do you think that has anything to do with your betrayal? And they would look at me like I'm crazy. You see, that happened 20 years ago. All they did was put themselves in a perpetual stage three holding pattern. You see how that works? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that's why that's the most common place to get stuck. Anyway, If you're willing to let go of all those small self benefits and everything that goes along with it, grieve more than the loss, you have to do a bunch of things. You move to stage four. Stage four is finding and adjusting to a new normal. Here's where you acknowledge, I cannot undo my betrayal, but I can control what I do with it. So I always use that example of if you've ever moved to a new house, office, condo, apartment, whatever. Your stuff's not all there. It's not quite cozy yet, but it's going to be okay. And when you're in this mental space, you start turning down the stress response. You're not physically healing just yet, but you stopped causing the massive damage you were causing in stage two and stage three. What's also interesting about stage four is if you were to move, you don't take everything with you, right? You don't take Mm -hmm. the stuff that doesn't represent the version of you want to be of who you want to be in that new space. And what I found was if your friends weren't there for you right here is where you've outgrown them. You don't take them with you. And people ask me all the time. They say, I've had these friends 10, 20, 30 years. What the heck is it me? Yes, it is. You're undergoing a transformation and, and they just don't have a role like they used to. Anyway, when you've made this new mental space home, you're okay with it, you can slowly move to the fifth most beautiful stage. And this is healing, rebirth, and a new worldview. The body starts to heal. Self-love, self-care, eating well, exercise. You're taking better care of yourself now. You didn't have the bandwidth for that earlier. You were smart. Now you do. Uh, Your mind is healing. You're making new rules, new boundaries based on your experience. And you have a new worldview based on what you see so clearly now. And the four legs of the table, it was just all about the physical and the mental. By this point, we're solidly grounded because we're focused on the emotional and the spiritual too. Those are the five stages. Perfect, okay. So when you're going through stage three, one of the, and I didn't want to interrupt you because you you were you were clipping along pretty good there. <laughs> uh, but uh, uh, but one of the things I was thinking about was you know when, when people are getting entrenched in, in that stage and, and becoming comfortable in that stage. Mm-hmm. Uh, a previous guest likened uh, hanging around their traumas to the, the, the uncomfortable thorny blanket. Mm-hmm. And even though they, people don't know what, how to get rid of the blanket or how to take it off, they keep it on because it's what they're familiar with. Yeah. And, and so that's, that was the first thing that popped in my head as you were talking about that, because it's one of the things that no matter what somebody has gone through in, in life, uh, whether it's physical abuse, emotional abuse, betrayal, and, and, and for the purposes of our discussion, mm-hmm. there's a level of trauma that's attached to that. And when that happens, 
um, no matter what the situation is, when people are going through a healing process, I find that they're they're doing just what that former guest, uh, her name is Terry Kozlowski. Terry said that, you know, they put on this this thorny blanket yeah. uh, because it's it's what's comfortable to them is because where they they feel that they have some level of control uh, with what's going on. That's it. It's the familiar. It's not that it's good. It's that it's familiar. And here, uh, life has completely started spinning out of control. So, you know, that's one of the reasons why it seems so odd to look at something like uh, adopting a morning practice or eating well or exercising. Like, what the heck does that have to do with healing? Well, it's because that may be the only thing you can control right now while everything else is spitting so, you know, so crazy. So, so it's, um, it is so true. And that's what we do. This is, this is also one of the reasons why let's say, you know, a child comes from, you know, some sort of neglect, abuse, whatever they move into very often similar types of relationships, not because it's good, because it's familiar. It's like, oh, I know that. I know how this works. I know what I have to do to to stay safe and okay here. Okay. So, you know, and one of the other things you mentioned earlier, too, is that when people are going through this, uh, they have the, that false sense of empowerment mm-hmm. and, you know, that um, I don't need other people and, and I don't need this and I don't need that or I don't need to, to have attachment. What are some of the indicators for people who are listening to know if they're stuck in that in that spot or if they're getting to a point where they're giving themselves a false sense of security, a false sense of empowerment? First thing, if I just struck a nerve, then you then take a look, <laughs> take a look what's under the hood right there, because, uh, you know, I'm not saying we should ever need anyone. I mean, here's the thing. If you are truly and completely healed and you have you know had all different types of relationships and you're like you know what i'm good i just want to be on my own and that feels really perfect for me more power to you go for it that's not what i'm talking about right then it's i've experienced the good the bad the ugly i've been through all of it now it's my choice to to just go about you know my own way and do my thing i'm not talking about that i'm talking about when you're uh keeping everyone at an arm's length because of the fear of being hurt again you know it's like getting burned on the stove and swearing off cooking because you just don't want to be burned again that's not fair to you now do you need to learn to trust again and you need to heal of course you do Uh, But it's, um, you know, not having close relationships is like living half a life. I like that. We'll be right back after a word from our sponsors. Since 1982, Vital Signs and Graphics has been helping professionals with all their image, logo, and design needs. Perhaps you're looking for signs and banners, truck and trailer lettering, business cards, brochures, or other image and marketing aids, Vital Signs and Graphics in-house design studio has you covered. From logos to apparel, start to finish, Vital Signs and Graphics has everything you need to look and feel professional. Call Rick at 231-652-3300. He'll get you noticed. And now back to Focused on Forward. Now, you mentioned earlier um, uh, working for an institute. So let's Mm -hmm. talk about your work with the institute, what you're doing there, the name of the institute, um, all that kind of fun stuff. Yeah. So uh, so it's called the PBT, which stands for Post Betrayal Transformation Institute. And and actually, Post Betrayal Transformation was the third discovery that healing from betrayal is very different than healing from other life crises, death of a loved one, disease, natural disaster. And it's because it feels so intentional. So we take it so personally. Yeah. So the whole self has to be rebuilt. Rejection, abandonment, confidence, worthiness, belonging, trust. They all have to be rebuilt. Plus you have to heal from the experience. So that type of healing needed its own name, which is now called post-betrayal transformation. Anyway, so the PBT Institute um, is the only space to fully heal physically, mentally, emotionally from the betrayal of a family member, partner, friend, coworker, self. And it was... Uh, constructed because, and it's on now it's completely online. When the five stages were discovered, like you can't make discoveries like that and go back to business as usual. Right. So I, I I created, I put it in a program so people can literally walk themselves through the stages. And then that, 
blew up. And then I was like, how do I leverage me? And, and so I created the coaching certification. So coaches, healers, doctors, therapists can become certified in the five stages so they can move their clients and patients forward. And that went really well. And then I was like, okay, I saw that the wrong uh, support does way more harm than good. So I was like, okay, what if I take what the research proved we need to heal, the 25,000 people who've taken the post-betrayal syndrome quiz, what they say they need, what clearly isn't working, I'll leave out, and put that under one roof, which is now the PBT Institute. Okay, excellent. So if people are looking to try and get in touch with you and, and they want to maybe take some of your, your courses or they want to learn more about them so they can they can – feel better about themselves and, and how they fit inside of their own skin. Mm -hmm. How do people get a hold of, of Dr. Debbie Silver? Yeah, the, the best thing to do, take the post-betrayal syndrome quiz to see to what extent you're struggling. And you can just find that at the PBT, as in post-betrayal transformation, the pbtinstitute.com forward slash quiz. Okay, excellent. Um, so one of the things I like to ask every single guest that's been on the show, there's two questions I like to ask them. So, uh, and I'll ask you those questions now. Okay. So, looking back over the entirety of your journey, what's the single greatest lesson that you have learned? Um, just love conquers all. Okay. And, and what do you mean by that? Because different people have different definitions yeah. of what that means. That, you know, I guess seeing the healing that's taken place within my own family, seeing the healing that happens within our community, it's based, it's based on love. It's based on healing. Uh, it's based on the ability of just, it's based on realizing um, you're so much stronger than you think. And you weren't here just to experience bad luck, trust the process, trust yourself, fuel everything with love and just do something good with something bad. Okay, good. All right. The second question, pretty similar in nature. Looking back over the entirety of your journey, mm -hmm. what was the single greatest piece of advice that you were given? Hmm. The single? Well, I'll tell you, there's a mantra that I've been saying my 30 years in business, and I don't, no one told, said it to me, but I, I, I just remember forming it real early. And this can apply to every single uh, topic in life. Ready? Okay. Hard now, easy later. Easy Boom. now, hard later. Take your pick. It's going to be one of those two. <laughs> I mean, take an example of, you know, I started in health and, and weight loss. Hard now, you know, it's easy now. There are the cookies and I want them. Hard later, I can't button my pants, right? Sure. Hard now, I want the cookies, but I'm not going to have them. Easy later, look at me and look how good I look. You see, any area of life, hard now is what we avoid. We do not like being uncomfortable. But when you take that on, easy later, right? You heal. Yeah, I like that. I am uh, I'm writing that down. <laughs> so it's it served me for years. It's something that clients from 30 years ago that I'm still in touch with, they still share, they still talk about. It just works, no matter what the topic. No, it's and it's uh, one of those easy things that you can kind of, not that you can just rattle it off, but it's something that you can kind of store away in your memory banks and, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and bring back later yeah. when... Uh, Perhaps things are either hard or easy, depending on the path you took. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Oh, excellent. So one more thing I wanted to ask you about. So I, I was looking in, in doing the research for having you come on the show. Um, I saw that you had an opportunity to be on a TED Talk. Two. Yeah. yeah. Two. I'm sorry. I only saw one of them. So I apologize. No All worries. Right. All right. So uh, now we're, we're both of your TED Talks about this this topic then no the first one it, uh, is called stop sabotaging yourself and this is uh it, it it we certainly spoke to it where it's where we're using those numbing uh, methods of mass distraction to prevent ourselves from seeing feeling or facing something and that was the first one and the second one is do you have post-betrayal syndrome and that's where i really shared it with the world for the first time Hold on, I'm still writing down methods of mass distraction. I forgot that <laughs> earlier. I like that. I didn't make that up. I heard it somewhere. That's not mine. That's okay. I still like it. I yeah. do too. If I like it, it gets written down. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, and so, and, and I was thinking about, because I, I had seen the one about uh, the post-betrayal syndrome. That's the one I, I was focusing on. Um, but one of the things I was thinking about is, is 
with the, with this, and, and I apologize for circling back to something that we've kind of already t- covered, but there was a list of questions that I had seen mm-hmm. that that people ask themselves when going through this. And now these are things that are potentially covered in your your online quiz. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, like I've I've been let down so many times. Will I be ever be able to trust again? Um, why does it hurt so much when trust is gone? Uh, you know, uh, how can I get past this feeling? Mm. Um, you know, so once people have taken the quiz, you know, and they start through this thing, are those some of the questions that people tend to get answers to if they follow the, the, the course? Oh, absolutely. You know, whether they just do the programs or they go to, we have live daily classes with our certified coaches within the community and each one has a specialty. So, you know, some have 30 plus years in cognitive behavioral therapy. Some have uh, 20 years experience in trauma. Some specialize in narcissism and reconciliation. And, you know, the whole idea is anything that can help our members heal physically, mentally, emotionally is addressed and, and worked through. Uh, my book is titled Trust Again. You can learn to trust again. It's a process. It's actually a four-step. Uh, we teach a four-step trust rebuilding process. Uh, but when you do it right, you're building, you're rebuilding something that's so solid, so strong, and on such stable, sturdy legs. Uh, and that's why it can potentially be and and used wisely the catalyst for your complete and total transformation okay excellent and and that was the next thing i was going to ask you about was your book so now that you've mentioned that um where can people find your book and and uh look into more about that yeah i mean they could get it right from amazon but i suggest they get it from the link i'm going to give because then they can come back and get all kinds of goodies <laughs> so. fantastic they could just get that at uh, the PBT Institute.com forward slash trust again. All right, perfect. And I'll make sure that uh, we'll include that in the, the information down below so that people can uh, go right to that link to find out more about you, your institute, and the work you're doing. So, um, Dr. Silver, thank you so much for being a guest on Focused on Forward today. It's been a joy to speak with you. Do you have any parting words of wisdom for people? First of all, thank you so much for having me. It's people like you who give people like me a voice, so I'm I'm grateful. Yeah, I, you know, if you have to say this to yourself a hundred million times, it's worth it. Even though it happened to you, it's not about you. Uh, but you've been through the worst of it already, and you owe it to yourself to heal. Excellent. Thank you. All right, guys, this is Dr. Debbie Silver. I encourage you to check her out. Uh, Link in the information down below, and you guys will be able to find out more about her, her book, and the institute that she's doing work with. All right, guys, that's going to conclude us today for Focused on Forward. Well, that concludes another episode of Focused on Forward. To be a guest of Focused on Forward, you can reach us through Twitter at Podcast FOF, through our Facebook page named Focused on Forward, or through email, focusedonforward at gmail.com. We look forward to hearing each and every one of your stories that has yet to be told. So until then, be safe, be kind, and be loving to one another as you stay focused on forward.